Sorry, sure, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. try that one there. I'll try this one. Yeah. Uh, is that better? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think the coal industry's power is, is an understated kind of power, and um, it's an industry that doesn't have, as, as David, um, David's book shows, it doesn't have um, much of a public face. It's not happy in the spotlight. You know, we don't have you know the um, coal billionaires um, strutting the um, you know stage the way you know like your, your Andrew Forrest and your Gina Reinhart's. We just had briefly a. Um, the Boganair, uh, who I wrote a book about, Nathan Tinkler, but um, he was never really a billionaire, actually. And, uh, and instead, what we've got is these three big companies, BHP, Rio and Extrata, um, that you know, don't uh, feel the need to get out in the, um, in the media very often. And uh, their coverage of, the, of what they do is mainly um, confined to the business pages. And uh, I think also because, you know, Places, you know, where coal is mined, it's out of sight, out of mind. It's the La Trobe Valley, it's the Hunter Valley, it's the Surat Bowen Basins in Queensland. And, um, and you know, for most of the metro media, um, you know, capital city, um, broadcast television, they just don't go there. So, and I think the industry is, you know, it's not glamorous. It's not like they're mining gold or, you know, um, diamonds or anything exciting. Uh, it's pretty, uh, there's coal everywhere. Um, it's a sort of volume margin game. Uh, and um, they're just happy to get on with what they do. Uh, and if you read the papers at the moment, actually, you'd think the coal industry was on its knees. You know, uh, they've got climate besieged by climate activists. They've got a price slump. You know, they're absolutely um, gnashing and grinding of teeth over the um, you know fall from the 2008 peak price peak. We've got job cuts yesterday. 700 um, jobs gone, and you know, Queensland BHP from its BMA joint venture. Um, you know, the boom is over, I think that message is getting through, but what's not getting through and what you don't realise is that the tonnes keep going up. So out of Newcastle Port, they're still talking about building another coal loader, um, we're up to 150 million tonnes a year ballpark and they're still talking about, I think, going to 200. Uh, and of course the climate doesn't care what the price of coal is, it just cares about whether the, t uh, the coal gets burnt. And, uh, and that industry, you know, the mine approvals are still moving through the pipeline. So, um, as John mentions, you know, still facing the um, Bulga uh, Walkworth expansion. Um, and, you know, we're looking at uh, projects like uh, in the Gal opening up a whole new basin in Queensland with the world's biggest coal mines, whether it's, you know, um, Clive Palmer or, um, you know, the Indian companies Adani or GVK. Why is this happening? The idea has very deep roots that it's against Australia's natural advantage to leave the coal in the ground. And I won't talk about the climate imperative, I assume everyone here uh, understands that. Uh, but, you know, whether it's Greg Combay saying on, on day one of his job as environment minister that he was going to, um, he was going to, you know, the coal industry was safe, or whether it's Tony Abbott um, saying he can't think of anything more damaging to the Australian economy than, you know, leaving coal in the ground. Or, or I'd like to run this quote, if, I don't know if you, any, any of you remember from um, last year when Bill McKibben was on Q&A and Michael Stutchbury, uh, who is the very well-respected um, editor of the Financial Review, um, said this about the divestment campaign, which uh, Bill mentioned, Sydney Uni has now kind of dipped its toe in the water by selling a stake in Whitehaven. Um, he said, I think the idea that Bill is maintaining of a campaign to divest for people to sell out of Australian coal companies, basically close down the Australian coal industry, is sort of verging on madness. I think that would, I think people really have to, in Australia, have to realise the extent to which our living standards are propped up by this high coal, iron ore and fossil fuels generally. Uh, now, he, there's another whole paragraph there, and I, I give that as an example of what I think is... The, is um, you know the mainstream media attitude uh, to coal post in post GFC Australia, notwithstanding the climate debate. That is, we need this industry. It's hugely important. These are the biggest companies um, on our stock exchange, and uh, and that certainly, as a journalist working on the business desk, uh, trickles down um, to uh, I can say from experience, trickles down to every reporter. Uh, so, uh, 
Now that's partly true, of course. We do have some of the best coal in the world. Um, you know, a lot of it is coking coal used in steel making. It's not used, um, you know, for uh, energy generation. But 90% of the tons in the world are thermal coal, and uh, so we'll probably be mining coal and selling coal for a lot longer than you know the uh, green movement would like. Uh, but you know, the the hysterical reaction from the coal industry. Nobody is actually proposing to shut down Australia's coal industry. Nobody, not anyone, is actually saying let's close down existing mines. Uh, barely people are talking about whether we should actually... What, what we're really having a debate about is how much bigger should our industry get. And it was only a few years ago before prices came off that we were looking at um, port expansions along the east coast of Australia that would get us to a billion tonnes per annum. Now that um, you know that was that was a tripling that was a tripling of our coal exports. About Thirty uh, seconds, Peter. Sorry. About a minute. I've, I've, yes. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention a few examples that show how of the kind of coverage we get that show um, the power of the coal industry over the media. One of them was the release in 2012, the leaking of a, an anti-coal campaign, which David might be able to speak about. Greenpeace was part of it. Um, it went, you know, the idea was that they would legally challenge um, coal mine expansions with a $6 million fundraising campaign. Um, not illegally challenge. Nevertheless, um, you know, the reaction was hysterical. Everyone from the Treasurer Wayne Swan uh, to Clive Palmer brand branding it un-Australian. Um, another example, of course, is the mining tax, which David touched on already. Uh, and we've seen the carbon tax abolished too. I probably don't need to reprise those debates, but the fact is um, for the expenditure of $17 million, they were able to topple a pri Prime Minister and, and, uh, and nobble that, that tax proposal. And then, and then the third one I wanted to mention was the reaction to a young bloke who was sitting up in a, the Laird State Forest and put out a fake press release um, purporting to withdraw a loan from ANZ Bank to, um, to Whitehaven. Um, and the reaction again was over the top as though this guy had single-handedly wiped $300 million off the capitalisation of Whitehaven. Uh, the fact that the true figure was sort of under, a, under, under half, half a million dollars worth of losses that he would, was the maximum he could have inflicted. It lasted 20 minutes, the hoax. Uh, but everybody, the entire country, wanted to throw the book at him. And, uh, and yeah, there's just simply no tolerance uh, for an aggressive... Uh, aggressive action on climate and I think it's uh, clearly the the power of the coal industry is is part of the problem there thank you, thank you.